Welcome back to Tactical Tuesday with Johnny Tiger on May 4th, 2022. And this Star Wars Day, May 4th, be with you and all that good stuff, all that geeky stuff. But no, I'm not going to teach you how to use a lightsaber. Not yet, anyway. One day, I may get around to it. Today, I want to show you guys something that is so small, so little, but it will enhance your understanding of your basic blocks and how sometimes, why sometimes, the block you're taught in class, the uh, karate block, the high block, the low block, the medium block, why they might fail and how just by changing stuff, changing your posture by a, as little as one inch can make them work. Specifically, today I want to address the low block because this is one of the easiest thing to mess up. Let's take a quick look. What is a low block? A low block is when an attack is coming at you towards your leg, your hip, your belly area. Okay, so usually this attack comes in the form of a straight punch towards your guts or your groin or a punch, a stick, a knife is stabbed toward your groin, your guts, or a knife or a stick is swung at your hip, your leg area. So it's like a hook punch coming in from the outside, You're coming around from the outside. Either way, either straight in or out from the side, a very standard kind of low block that we see all the time in karate, in taekwondo, in uh, kung fu, uh, even in krav maga, yes, is when there's a low line attack coming in, you sweep your arm down and out like brushing something away from you okay that's this brushing down motion and the theory is that if you time this right the incoming attack will meet your brushing arm and your arm should sweep it out to the side okay as they come in. Now, for straight attack, this works most of the time. But for attacks that come in from the side, this hook, low line hook, roundhouse kind of attack, a lot of people, when they go to the low block, they'll find that it works great when you're working with your partner in class, when you're going like, okay, I'm ready. Throw your attack. Hoi! 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 Okay? So there's a definite rhythm. You know it's coming. You're ready for it. And you meet it. And then you already know they're going to throw the exact same attack at the exact same, same angle at the exact same rhythm. And it will work every time. However, if you go out of your way and tell your partner to change up the rhythm or to sometimes go soft or sometimes swing hard and sometimes swing hard and fast, sometimes swing hard and slow, you will suddenly find that when the attack is coming in fast and hard with a lot of pressure, your low block suddenly start to fail. It's not so obvious when it's a punch, okay? If it's just a punch, it works sometimes. But when there's something in their hand, like a stick or a knife, you will find that you start to get stabbed in your leg. Your 
you're hitting them with your low block, you're touching them with your low block, but what's happening is your arm bend under the pressure, right? And as soon as your arm is pushed in, the knife hits your leg. So why is that? Why is that? Why is that trusty low block, one of the most basic techniques, suddenly fail when the pressure is on? Well, there are many possible reasons, but one of the most common that I see and I address, and most of the time, once students take this into uh, account, it fixes their low block. I was going to show you guys today. Standard low block. Attack calm. I sweep my arm down and out. Okay. So I'm going to simplify this so you guys can hopefully pick this up on the video. I'm going to keep, keep my arm out and down like this. Like I'm at the end. I'm at the apex of my low block. Okay. I'm going to, I'm going to uh, keep my arm in this position, and I'm going to walk into Bruce, my training dummy. I, I, I want you guys to see what's going to happen. I keep, I have my low block ready. Okay, I, I already extend my low block. I'm going to walk forward. Okay, let's look at that again. I have my low block ready, my arm is down and out at the apex of my low block, and I walk forward into Bruce. Oh. What happened? In case you guys can see it very well, or those of you that can't see the screen, what happens is as soon as I walk into Bruce, Bruce pushes my arm into my body. No matter how stiff I keep my arm, this momentum alone is pushing my arm out of position okay so that's clearly no good because i'm not even walking all that fast it's just the weight of me and bruce coming together it's folding my arm into my body that's no good right now we're going to do the same thing we're going to go i'm going to walk into bruce and this time, I'm going to show you guys a difference, okay? My low block is ready. I'm walking into Bruce. Okay? My arm did not fold. Let's look at this again. I'm going to have my low block out. I'm going to walk into Bruce. Okay? I didn't fold. Bruce bounced off the wall. Now, without using Bruce, let me show you guys the little difference between the first time and the second time. The first to set a low block, why they, the arm couldn't take the weight. First time, I walk like this. Very confident, my arm sweep out to the side in the front. And I walk with my chest puffed out. Second time. When my arm didn't fold at all. When I walk forward, I drop my shoulder by an inch. I sink my weight down and I walk forward, not puffing out my chest, not raising up my posture. I walk forward, hunched a little bit, my shoulder dropped down and I walk forward with my whole upper body weight behind my blocking arm. This makes a difference, okay? When you do the when you do the low block like it's just a walk in the park, you are using your arm and its momentum, which means when there's a heavier object and more momentum, your arm will fold. But if you drop your shoulder just by that one inch, drop your posture, just hunch a little bit, drop your weight into that block. Versus, wait, wait. 
Okay? You have to see, when I don't drop my weight, when I just stand here and do the low block, Bruce is barely moving when I hit him with my arm. But if I drop my weight and shoulder by that one single inch, okay, I'm pushing the entire dummy back just with my low block. Okay, so remember, one tiny inch makes the world of difference in fighting, in martial art, in self-defense. Okay, a knife, a knife that is here on your on the tip of your shoulder, a knife cutting the tip of your shoulder, versus a knife cutting the top of your trap or close to your throat. Okay, that's a world of difference. Here, you get a sore shoulder, you bleed. Here, an inch in, a couple inch in, you die. Right? Blocking is the same thing. Okay? If I don't have my posture right, if I'm just off by one inch, my shoulder is up too high, the knife comes, my arm fold, and the knife goes into my body. If I remember to sink my weight into that block, dropping that one inch, the knife come, my arm is not going to bend. Look how far away the knife is from my body. It's at least six inches away. I'm safe. Okay? So the takeaway for today, if you learn nothing else, is sometimes remember to adjust your posture. Even by that one little inch, you will notice that it makes all the difference in the world. Thank you for checking out today's Tactical Tuesday. We'll be back again tomorrow for Wisdom Wednesday. For now, have a good night.